Introduction to Solutions in Aqueous Reactions Molarity and Limiting Reactions Specifically in this tutorial, we are going to go over molarity and limiting reactions and then work on a bunch of example problems with a lot of explanation. Molarity and limiting reactions. So a little review, and this is not in your notes if my AP Chemistry students are watching because we just went over it. But for those of you who are just jumping into this video because you want to watch it, please remember that molarity expresses the concentration of a solution as the amount of solute in moles, very important that it's moles, divided by the volume of solution in liters. So the formula that we're going to use here is molarity is equal to the amount of solute in moles divided by the volume of solution in liters. And we're going to have to be able to manipulate this formula to solve for different variables. Now remember, a reagent, because you might in different situations hear these as limiting reagent problems or limiting reaction problems, a reagent in chemistry is a substance added to a system to cause a chemical reaction or added to test if a reaction occurs. When you're dealing with limiting reaction problems, the term reactant and reagent are often used interchangeably when referring to a situation where one of the reactants is completely consumed. So full disclosure, if I slip up and I say limiting reactant versus limiting reagent, they mean the same thing. Let's look at an example. When 80 milliliters of a 0 0.0740 molar calcium nitrate solution is mixed with 20 milliliters of a 0 0.160 molar sodium hydroxide solution, calcium hydroxide precipitates out of the mixture. Determine the limiting reactant and the mass of the calcium hydroxide precipitate formed. The first thing that we need to do here before we do any type of calculation is figure out our balanced equation. So we have two reactants that are given to us. We are given CaNO32 as one reactant, and we are also given N. A O H. Excellent. And they are going to produce some products. And they tell us specifically in the problem that calcium hydroxide precipitates out. So we know one of the products is going to be C A O H in parentheses, of course, two. And then at least something else. So where is this coming from? Well, the calcium and the hydroxide are coming together because this is a double replacement reaction, which means the sodium and the nitrate are also going to be coming together. So we always write the metal first. So we know that sodium is Na plus one and the nitrate is NO3 minus one. So plus one and the minus one are going to cancel each other out, which means my other product is NaNO3. And if we remember our solubility rules, we know this is just gonna be aqueous and this is not going to form a solid. While on the other hand, they tell us CaOH2 is going to precipitate out, which means this is going to be a solid. And of course, these other two would be aqueous and aqueous. Not that we're putting state symbols all the time, but I'm just trying to draw attention that we do have two soluble reactants to start with, and we can see where we have something that's precipitating out. Now, the other thing that we need to do here is we need to figure out how to balance this. So if I look at this, I say, okay, one Na, one Na, that's good. One NO3, oh no, two NO3s over on this side, which means I need to put a two in front of here, which means now I have two sodiums over here. My two nitrates are over here. So two NAs, which means I need to go back and put a two in front of here so that my sodiums are now balanced out again. And then I have two hydroxide ions over on my reactant side. And it turns out that that is already over here. So that's balanced out one CA, one CA over here. 
and I think I have this balanced correctly, which is good because I'm going to be referring back to this situation because I'm going to need to go back and look at coefficients. So this is what you should have in your notes for the balanced equation. So now I have my balanced chemical equation and the first thing I'm going to do is to determine the limiting reactant here. So which out of these two reactants is going to determine how much of the product is produced? One of these two, either the calcium nitrate or the sodium hydroxide is going to limit how much calcium hydroxide will be produced in the end. And in order to do this, I need to use my molarity formula. So I remember that molarity is equal to moles over liters. And the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take my information up here, 80 milliliters of 0 0.0740 molar CaNO32. Okay, so I'm going to look at this and I'm going to say 0 0.0740 for zero molar CaNO32. And I'm going to have that equal to moles of this. And I'm going to take my 80 milliliters. Of course, we need to convert this into liters. That's a, that's a must do. So I'm going to just say that I know that 80 milliliters is equal to 0 0.08 liters and then I'm going to cross multiply these two numbers and when I do that and I'm not going to round at all I'm going to get an answer of 0 0.00592 moles of CaNO32 and I'm going to label here I'm going to absolutely make sure that I label so I don't screw anything up so now I have moles of CaNO32 and I'm going to take the information that's provided to me about the sodium hydroxide, the 20 milliliters of a 0 0.160 molar NaOH and also find the number of moles. So the molarity here is 0 0.160 molar NaOH and that is going to be equal to moles and that is 20 milliliters. So I know if I convert that into liters, it's going to be 0 0.02 liters. And when I solve for moles here, I'm going to get 0 0.0032 moles of NaOH. So all I've done at this point is taken the information given to me and, you know, converted to moles, solved for moles. But I can't look at these two numbers and think, oh, that's the limiting reagent. Remember, what you need to do now is go back to your balanced equation and look at the coefficient in front of CaNO32 and the coefficient in front of NaOH, which of course here is two. So I'm going to take those numbers and yes, I know that's an assumed one. So I'm going to divide this by one and I'm going to divide moles of NaOH by two because they're in a one to two ratio and I get a number here of 0 0.00592 and I get a number over here of 0 0.0016 and I'm not going to label these with moles or anything like that. No, no, no. This is just here to tell me which one is the limiting reagent. Whatever is the smaller number will be your limiting reactant. So this is my limiting reactant right here, LR. The original amount of sodium hydroxide, which I should look at the original moles, not this number, but this right here, this original number of moles of sodium hydroxide is going to be what limits the amount of product produced. So I have achieved my first goal of figuring out which one is my limiting reactant. I can now go on and figure out the mass of the calcium hydroxide precipitate that is formed. So I know from the previous work that I did that my limiting reactant, out of the two reactants, my limiting reactant is NaOH. And based, also based off the work that I previously did, I know that if I take the molarity and the volume that I have 
0.0032 moles of NaOH to work with because now I'm trying to figure out the mass of the calcium hydroxide that precipitates out. So I'm going to start with my moles of NaOH, which is 0.0032 moles of NaOH. And you have to be really careful here to go back to your original amount of moles, not the number that you use to determine which one is the limiting reactant. You don't want that. You want your original amount of moles. Can't stress that enough. And I don't want, I don't want sodium hydroxide. I want calcium hydroxide. So this next step, because I have a balanced equation from my previous work, I have moles of sodium hydroxide on the bottom because I want to get out of that and I want to get into moles of calcium hydroxide, CaOH2. And if you go back and look at the balanced equation from the previous slides, we know that the coefficient in front of the NaOH is 2 and the coefficient in front of the CaOH2 is one, and that moles of sodium hydroxide will cancel moles of sodium hydroxide, but I don't want moles of calcium hydroxide. I want the mass of calcium hydroxide. So I have to take this one step further. So I know that in one mole of calcium hydroxide, if I figure out the gram formula mass, which I'm not going to do, I'm just going to tell you all that the, it is 74 grams of Ca, that's an A, OH2, and then moles cancel moles, and I'm in grams of calcium hydroxide, which is what I want. And if I do 0 0.0032 times 1 times 74, and I divide it all by 2, I will get an answer of 0.118 eight grams of calcium. Let's see if I can write this neater hydroxide. There we go. So we figured out the mass of the calcium hydroxide that precipitates out based on our limiting reactant of sodium hydroxide. Let's go on and do another example. When 50 milliliters of a 2.50 molar lead to nitrate solution is mixed with 100 milliliters of a 1.30 molar potassium sulfate solution, lead to sulfate precipitates out of the mixture. Determine the limiting reactant and the mass of the lead to sulfate precipitate that is formed. So again, we need to start with a balanced equation. So the first reactant that they give us is lead to nitrate. So it is PB and we know that Roman numeral number two means that this is plus two and nitrate is NO3 minus one. So if we cross these down, our first reactant is PBNO32 plus, and then it's mixed with potassium sulfate. So potassium is K plus one, sulfate is SO4 minus two. So I'm gonna cross those numbers down. So my second reactant is K2SO4, and that is going to undergo a double replacement reaction. And our problem says, hey, the lead to sulfate is going to precipitate out. Well, lead is PB plus two, sulfate is SO4 minus two, and the plus two and the minus two are going to cancel each other out. So that's going to be PBSO4, and we know it's a precipitate, so this is our solid. We'll just put that in for giggles. And then what is our other product? Well, we've used the PB, and we've used the SO4, which means our metal ion will always come first in our formula, so K plus 1, and then we have our nitrate, NO3 minus 1, plus 1 and minus 1 cancel each other out. So that's going to be KNO3. So now we look at this and we say, hey, we have a correctly written equation. Now we need to go back and balance this thing. So I'm going to look for parentheses here. And if I look for parentheses, I see there's parentheses around this NO3. So I have two NO3s right here. So here's NO3 on the other side, which means I need to put a two in front of there. 
So now I have two nitrates on either side. I have two potassium over here. I need to put two potassium over here. Hey, that's already balanced. SO4, one SO4, one SO4, that looks good. One PB, one PB, that looks good. So it looks for like for this equation, all I really needed to do was put the two in front of the KNO3. All right, right on, good. We're off to a good start. So we have the exact same situation as before. Now we are going to determine the limiting reactant. So which out of these two reactants from this balanced equation that I recopied, either this reactant or this reactant, the amount of those is going to limit how much of our solid lead to sulfate is produced. So now, like we did with the previous problem, we have 50 milliliters of a 2.50 molar lead to nitrate solution. Okie dokie, we need the molarity formula. Molarity is equal to moles over liters. And I'm going to start with my molarity. So 2.50 molar PBNO32 equals, and then I'm going to be solving for moles. Try to write neatly here. And that is in 50 milliliters of solution. So I have to turn that over into liters. So that's going to be 0 0.05 liters. I am going to cross multiply here to get the number of moles of PBNO32, which turns out to be 0 0.125 moles of PBNO3, that was sort of ugly, two. Okay, so we've done that. We figured out the number of moles of PBNO3, two. Now let's go to the potassium sulfate. We have 1.30 molar K2SO4. That's going to be equal to moles. All right. And that's in 100 milliliters. So we take 100 milliliters, we convert that into liters. So that's going to be 0.1 liters. We are going to cross multiply. And to figure out the number of moles here, it is 0 0.13 moles of K2SO4. Okay, now we go back and we look at our balanced equation. So PBNO32, there is an assumed one in front of that, so an assumed one. And K2SO4, there's, oh, look at that. There's also an assumed one over that. So now the question is, which one is the smaller number? And it's not by much, but the smaller number is associated with the lead to nitrate. This is my limiting reagent or limiting reactant, I should say. Okay, because it is the smaller number. And again, this is how it's so important not to round. I know they're close, but this number is still smaller than this number. So based off of that, we can now go and figure out the mass of lead to sulfate that will precipitate out now that we know our limiting reactant. Now we're going to figure out the mass of lead to sulfate that precipitates out, okay, that forms a solid. So I've recopied our balanced equation one more time. We know that our limiting reactant is the PBNO32, it looks like a W, but I, I swear that's an N. Yep, see, I'm making it really distinct. That's an N. So PBNO32, and we started with, point zero point one two five moles of P B N O three two. So we're going to consume all of this in the formation of the lead two sulfate. So we're in moles of P B N O three two. I need to get this out of moles of P B N O three two and I need to get it into moles of lead two sulfate. So moles PBNO32, and I want to get this into moles, because I have to do the mole to mole first, P 
be SO4. And I'm going to look at the coefficient in front of both of these. So coefficient of 1, coefficient of 1, 1, 1. That's fine. Now we're in moles of PBSO4, but I don't want to be in moles of PBSO4. I want the mass of the lead 2 sulfate. So I know that one mole of PBSO4, that's a 4, that the gram formula mass of that is 303 grams of PBSO4. And before I do my final calculations, I want to make sure that all of my units cancel. So moles of PBNO32 cancels moles of PBNO32. Moles of PBSO4 cancels moles of PBSO4. And when I do my final calculation of 0 0.125 times 303, and I work that out, my final answer is 37.9 grams of PBSO4. Alrighty that. So when all of the moles of lead to nitrate are consumed, we will produce 37.9 to the correct number of significant figures, moles, grams of PBSO4. So what did you learn? We went over the definition of molarity one more time and looked at the difference between limiting reactant and limiting reagent and how they're used interchangeably. And then we did two pretty involved problems that involved molarity and limiting reactants. Need more help? Feel free to contact me. Have a great day.